This season, the Idget Gardener is branching out. My friend, Susie Middleton, who is an avid gardener and Vine Cooking's vegetable queen, not to mention the author of Fast, Fresh, and Green, offered me and my fellow Idget Gardener, my husband, a substitute market garden farming gig. Susie and her beau work a market garden up island on Martha's Vineyard at their Green Island farm. They had plans to head off island for a few days, and they asked us to step in to mind the store. Our assignment, keep the chickens, bunny, and garden alive, a tall order for an idiot gardener, and if possible, earn a little market garden cash for the farm. We got off to an early start, well, some of us did. Uh, the first task was to feed Coco Bunny. In short order, I remembered that I'm afraid of domestic bunnies. Uh, this is due to an unfortunate experience with my childhood bunny, Thumper. Uh, next, I needed to feed the eight chickens, change their water, and let them out of their coop into their pen. I then learned that I'm afraid of chickens, too. We'd been warned that they're prone to peck at toes of those wearing sandals in the pen. I was in sneakers, but the thin layer of sneaker mesh and pad between my toes and the chicken beaks had me on edge. By the way, Susie has an attractive assortment of chickens. She has one Sicilian buttercup, two barred rocks, two buff orpingtons, two partridge rocks, and one aracana. I'm not sure how to say that, but they're the ones with the pretty eggs. Then it was time to get gardening. The bush bean picking was the most time-consuming activity. Based on Susie's instructions, I discovered that I'd been picking my bush beans over at the Idget Garden too late, allowing them to get overly fat and thus tough. Susie's beans were a tender and more slender 3 sixteenths to 1 quarter inch thick. We also picked Swiss chard, but Susie's note said to hold off on picking other greens. Some, she said, were past their prime and becoming bitter. Others were too young. I loved the way the onion plantings looked, but these two were not in our picking instructions. Some carrots were ready, though, so we gathered a bundle of those. As the sun got higher, we wrapped up the harvest with a few zucchini, summer squash, a single patty pan, and some herbs. Arranging the heaping basket of beans, colorful squash, and my new favorite, lime basil, at the little farm stand was one of my favorite activities. Oh, we can't take credit for harvesting the red-gold potatoes or the French fingerlings. Susie and her beau had already harvested those. Uh, plus, there's a nifty wooden drawer of planted mint, inviting customers to clip their own mint garnish. Susie's farm stand, as you can imagine, operates on the honor system. Folks collect edibles and leave cash in a locked wooden box. They can get change from a red jar if they need it. At the end of the day, sales are recorded based on what remains unsold. This, too, was an Idget Gardener responsibility. Admittedly, the Idget Gardener is more of a house person. In fact, the greatest perk of our substitute farming gig may have been the outdoor shower. It's shown here during the daylight hours, but at night, beneath the stars and swaying pine branches, it was a little slice of heaven. After two days on Green Island Farm, it was back home for the Idget Gardeners to our own humble Idget Garden at one of Salem's community gardens. Thanks for checking in on the Idget Gardeners' attempt at market gardening. See you next time.